Good morning. It's good to be with you again today. This is the week before Christmas, and we can all say that it's a very different Christmas for a lot of different reasons. So many things are changing in the world around us, and it can be confusing. It can be a little bit frightening, but we all, have, we all have to understand that we still have a God who ultimately is in control of everything. So this morning, we're going to take a little bit of time and we're going to share a little bit about what God has given for us to be reminded of in this Christmas season. It's okay to be excited about presents and decorations and families and food and all of those things that are a part of our Christmas. But if that's all that our Christmas is about, then we're missing the most important part of Christmas. The Bible tells us about the measure of God's love found in Luke chapter 2. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea under the city of David which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and the lineage of David to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife being great with child and so it was that while they were there the days were accomplished that she should be delivered and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And they were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go even into Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary, and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it, wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as was told them by the shepherds. When we think about Christmas, Santa is about what I want. Jesus is about the grace and the love of God that we all need. When we think about what we read from Luke chapter 2, we picture in our minds this beautiful, serene setting where Jesus is born and he's wrapped in beautiful swaddling clothes and laying in a manger that was filled with, with hay. 
when the truth is Jesus was born in a stable it was a cave damp and musty dreary and not well lit he was wrapped in swaddling clothes and swaddling clothes are rags that are torn from clothes that aren't worth being clothes anymore he was laid in a manger a manger it wasn't some beautifully crafted piece of furniture made for a king it was a trough that the animals were fed from there was there was no fanfare there were no great crowds there were no kings and leaders and people from all over the land just a few shepherds the lowest of the low who had been told about what God had given when we think about Christmas there's an expression that I've heard probably most of my life that says Jesus is the reason for the season and while that sounds so appropriate it occurs to me that it really couldn't be further from the truth because you see it isn't Jesus that's the reason for the season it's you and I it's our sin and it's the price that God requires to be paid for our sin that is why Jesus came he came for us he died for us so that we could be forgiven and so that we could have a home forever with him and with his father in heaven this year what is Christmas about for you this year what are you going to do with the opportunities that you have to share the love of Jesus with others around you we are the reason for the season
Father, I am so thankful that you loved me, that you loved us so much, that you allowed your son to come to be born, to die, so that your requirement could be met for our sins. Father, I thank you for such a great love. And Father, I pray that as we go through some very difficult times, I pray, Lord, that you would remind us that we are never alone. We are never without you and that you have absolutely everything we need beginning with our Savior that brings us into your presence. Father, thank you for your love. Father, we pray that we would bring honor and glory to you in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen.